another great day with Brian and Tracy. Man made a bar, Morgan Wallen and Eric Church. Uh, still kind of hanging on there. Uh, they got to number two last week, but now they slipped back to number three uh, because Chase Beckham made a big old leapfrog from Con- six to number one, numero uno this week. Congratulations to the American Idol contestant, man. Look at him go. Yeah, yeah. He won that, uh, what, three years ago now. Three, three years seasons. ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good job for him. Hey, so Diva Night coming up on Friday, April the 19th out at the Walker County Fairgrounds. And you and three of your honky-tonk angel friends Mm -hmm. can win a girls' night out four-pack of tickets whenever you text your name and the keyword DIVA to 936-295-4102. Tracy and I will draw a winner each morning right here on the Wake Up Morning Show. And we want to say congratulations to our winner this morning, Catherine Duncan. Yeah, congratulations, Catherine. You must want a four-pack out with your honky-tonk angel friends. Oh, yeah. You More know, tickets to give away tomorrow, too. We're going to have fun with that. So, it, by the way, if you text in your name and the keyword diva, but you didn't win today, your name is still in the drawing for tomorrow. Yep. So there you go. Yep. Good luck. Hey, share it with your friends and tell them all about it. Jordan Davis and Tucson Too Late on 101.7 KCM, your hometown radio station. Let's talk a little bit about our hometown neighbors just to the south of us at Willis ISD, our Mm -hmm. Wildcat friends down there. Uh, That whole school district, and of course, for years and years and years and years, there's always been a rivalry between Huntsville and Willis. We always played football against each other. But then here a few years ago, Willis started growing Mm -hmm. and growing. And I mean fast. They are now a 6A school and they're still growing. 10,000 new students in the next 10 years is what they're projecting. And so because of that, they've got a very important bond election coming up. There are four proposals uh, wrapped up in this package that's valued at over $200 million dollars. But, you know, it, it really is important. So this, and obviously, this only applies to our KSAM listeners who live in Willis ISD. We mm-hmm. encourage you to get out and vote uh, for this thing on May the 4th. But if you want some details about what each of these proposals means, then we have a banner over on our webpage at KSAM1017.com where you can see all the projects, all the pro- propositions that are here, the ninth grade center and the transportation center the new athletic complex and community room, the aquatic center, the student activity center. There's a lot involved here, but really there are so many new students coming into the district that all of this stuff is very much needed. 10,000 in 10 years. Yeah, it's that's amazing, just amazing. And what it really means, uh, if, if you think about for your average uh, homeowner, property mm-hmm. owner, we're talking less than the price of a pizza per month yeah. is how much your taxes are only going to go. And you got to remember, a few years ago, they actually dropped the tax rate. Well, now the it'll go back up because it's a proposition, but it'll still be less than it was a couple of years ago. So, And remember, folks who are 65 or older don't pay any taxes. Exactly. Right. So, uh, But again, educate yourself. Make sure you fully understand the uh, propositions. It's at ksam1017.com for our friends in Willis ISD and the Bond 2024 that's coming up on May the 4th. So uh, get out there and uh, support your Wildcats. Jelly Roll on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. I'm Carlos Zimmerman hanging out with you on this Monday morning. Got your weather forecast coming up. Also got Lanco and Parker McCollum around the corner, too. Well, as I said, the CMT Music Awards were a lot of fun last night. I was told I didn't watch them. I was watching WrestleMania. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, folks. Uh, apparently, the performances rocked. Kelsey Ballerini did a great job hosting for a fourth and last time. <laughs> also, halfway through the show, Jelly Roll gave up free hugs to the crowd. Then he won all three awards he was up for. Video of the Year, Male Video of the Year, and the CMT Performance of the Year from his smash hit, Need a Favor. Now, the highlight of the night was Toby Keith getting a tribute. Brooks and Dunn sang Should Have Been a Cowboy. Sammy Hagar sang I Love This Bar. And Lainey Wilson sang How Do You Like Me Now? And, of course, Roger Clemens, the legendary pitcher himself, ended it all with a red Solo Cup toast. So... Uh, you can find all the list of last night's winners online, but hey, kudos to Jelly Roll. Dominating Jelly Roll halfway to hell on KSAM. Good morning. I'm Carlos. Your weather forecast is on the way. Also got Mitchell Tenpenny and Scotty McCreary coming up shortly. Well, folks, your first two food stories today. New data has shown that grocery shopping on an empty stomach costs you an extra $26 per trip on average. From personal experience, that seems low, because, you know, when I'm hungry, I go thinking, hmm, I need to stick to the list. And then I go to, well, the list was just a starting point. 
Uh, 76% of people agree that they're more likely to spend more if they shop while hungry, and about 60% say they're also likely to buy more unhealthy foods. And the research also found that the average person makes two grocery runs per week and budgets $162 for their haul. Now, although that's vague, because they don't break down how that may change depending on the size of the household, you gotta think about that there for just a moment. Sawyer Brown and Cafe on the Corner on KSAM. You're listening to 90s at Noon. I'm Carlos, your weather forecast on the way. Also got little Texas and Joe Diffie around the corner too. And it's time for our second food story of the day. Last hour, I talked about grocery shopping on an empty stomach and how that's going to cost you an extra $26 per trip. But you know what's really cheap and easy to make? Grilled cheese. Doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. And the reason I bring that up, because today's National Grilled Cheese Day. That's right. Uh, it's perfect because it's Friday. You don't need to cook anything any more than vol- any more involved. Uh, here's some random grilled cheese related fun that's floating around on the interwebs this morning. No one knows exactly how old the grilled cheese sandwich is, but one of the earliest references to melted cheese sandwiches is featured in Sarah Tyson Rohrer's Mrs. Rohrer's new cookbook from the year 1902. A new research says the average American adult eats 36 grilled cheeses a year. If you're thinking, that's crazy, I haven't had a single grilled cheese since the COVID lockdown in 2020, you're not alone. In a poll, 57% of Americans say they prefer white bread for their grilled cheese. 20%, 24%, 20%, 24%, sorry, like sourdough, 23% said wheat. 70% of people say they use butter when making them, while 20% add mayo. And most people just make grilled cheeses in a pan or cast iron skillet, but some people use a toaster oven or panini press. And 9% of people say they use an air fryer because, well, what can't you do with an air fryer? I, don't, I think you can pretty much put anything in an air fryer, and it'll be good for the most part. I haven't tried yet. I don't have one. Someone want to start a Kickstarter for me? Chris Young on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KSAM. Good afternoon. I'm Big Glenn Edwards. Your forecast is coming up here in just a little bit. So I tell you what, uh, today is Happy National Pet Day. That's right. Two-thirds of us have at least one pet at home. This according to the most recent stats. Now, 97% of us think that our fur babies are part of the family. Of course they are. Fur Kid Megan is a prime example. Uh, But we definitely get a little more creative when we're naming... Uh, our pets than we do with our kids. Now, I don't know about that, but again, this is according to this uh, annual contest from the folks at Nationwide Pet Insurance. So they have this contest every year to find the wackiest pet names in the U.S. Uh, the winners last year included a dog that was named Doc Paula Day, P-A-W, La Day, all right, uh-huh. Oh, and a cat named Spicy Beef Perito. So in the dog category, names for this year include uh, Boots with the Fur, Chug Chug Pickles, Little Richard Simmons, Sweatin' to the Oldies, <laughs> Lord Waddles, Lulu the Conqueror, Mr. Pizza Puff, and Molly from Corporate. All I Need Is You by Chris Jansen. You're on 101.7 K Sam playing today's best country and all of your favorites. We've already had a pretty good hour so far. We had sneaking into the top 10 earlier, Scotty McCreary with Cabin of Solo. And also a little bit earlier, we had Tyler Hubbard who has jumped a couple spots to number eight in the top 10. So, hey, we got some good music going so far here through this first hour of the Saturday afternoon drive. All right, to get to the business at hand. It's everyone's favorite time of year. It's tax season. Uh, We all hate it. (laughs) The deadline is Monday. And I just wanted to give you a fun little reminder that may upset everyone (laughs) in regards to how much of the government takes a bite out of our finances? A study found that the average American will pay just under, and this is an entire lifetime, they will pay just under $525,000 in taxes throughout their entire life. The exact number is 524625 That's not just income taxes either. That includes things like sales tax, property taxes, Altogether, it amounts to about 35% of the money that we will earn throughout our entire lifetime. But it also depends on where you live. People in one state actually have to cough up over half of their earnings. In New Jersey, 54% of your money gets taxed away. In Connecticut, they're 49. Vermont and New York at 45. Compare that to people in Alaska, where they have it pretty easy, at just 25%. No statewide sale tax in Alaska, so that's a big reason for that. Add to that, Delaware at 26, Louisiana at 27. 
Google Trends looked at the top questions we've been asking ahead of tax day that include, is it better to find joint, file jointly or separately? How to file a tax extension? And how often does the IRS audit? Now that's a little concerning, I'm gonna say that. The answer is about one in every 500 returns or a 0.2% chance, but if it's high, but it's higher of a chance if you earn a lot. People who make over 10 million a year have about one in 40 chance of being audited on their taxes just because it's so much income. But yeah, uh, I got depressed when I saw that a little over half a million dollars will get taxed throughout our life. I'm going to go in the corner and cry now. I'll, I'll be back.